virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Jesus Christ to empowers his followers to change the world today. Distance is not a barrier to God's move. Emmanuel TV, God with us. Children of God, praise the Lord. Is the Lord faithful to you? Are you sure the Lord is faithful to you? If you are sure that the Lord is faithful to you, put your hands together for the beautiful Lord Jesus. You are welcome to the presence of God in Jesus' name. And also we want to welcome all our viewers around the world. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Remember, we are in the arena of liberty. And the Bible says that in the arena of liberty, the key is not to suppress the flesh, but to surrender to the spirit. Once again, on behalf of my father in the Lord, Senior Prophet T.B. Joshua, we want to greet each and every one of you once again. Good morning. morning. Tell your neighbor, good good morning. Yes, you may be seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. And all the time, the Lord is good. Now, I want to start this morning by asking you one question. And the question is, if you don't mind, madam, do you know the purpose of God for your life? Amen. What is the purpose of God for your life? To serve him and to be healed completely. Our sister said, the purpose is to be healed. Now, let me ask another person. Please, brother, do you know the purpose of God for your life today? Yes, to save me. Hallelujah. Yes, the Bible says that if we know the purpose of God for our lives, we will want what God wants. If you know today the purpose of God for your life, you will want what God wants. The Bible says you will want it for the reason he wants it. In Matthew 15, verse 22 to 28, when Jesus referred to the Canaanite woman as a dog. The woman replied, Yes, Lord. I know that I am undeserving of what is served on the table for the highly favored children of Israel. Yes, all I asked for are some crumbs of your mighty grace. A single crumb of your mighty power in the healing of my daughter is all I wish for. The Bible says that our interest was centered on the bread of life which only Jesus Christ can provide. By his children's bread, Jesus means a gospel grace and miraculous cures. I mean, peculiar favors for peculiar people, which Only our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can provide for those he justifies. Hallelujah. Now, if we are today conscious that we deserve nothing 
The Bible says we will be grateful for anything. You know, today we are in the presence of God with different needs. If you realize that today I deserve nothing, the Bible says you will be grateful for anything. If we know how much we need God, the Bible says that we will not come to his presence and begin to ask for healing. If you know how much you need God, you will not come to his presence and begin to ask for blessing, prosperity, protection. If you know how much you need God, you will only come to his presence and ask for his redemption. Because within redemption is all you need. Are you talking about good health, prosperity? Remember to be redeemed is to be saved. And that is why the Bible says in the book of Matthew 6 verse 33 that seek for the kingdom of God. Brethren, if you know how much you need God, you will not have certain occasion for prayer, especially when you are in need of a particular thing. If you know how much you need God, you will come to his presence this morning and give him thanks for his mercy and favor upon your life. Because we are undeserving of his blessing. Tell your neighbor, I am undeserving of his blessing. Therefore, I will be grateful for anything. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in that book of Matthew 15, verse 22, he realized that the woman's need was far beyond the deliverance of her daughter. And that is why the woman also did not limit Jesus, knowing how undeserving she was. The Bible says she simply pleaded for mercy. Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. Tell your neighbor, don't limit Jesus. That would be the title of our message today. Tell your neighbor once again, say, don't limit Jesus. Because many of us will limit Jesus, but we don't know. When you kneel down to pray, you ask. You are busy limiting Jesus without knowing the purpose of God for what you are asking for. Once again, say don't limit Jesus. Don't limit Jesus to a certain answer. Now, let's quickly go to our proof test today. And that will be the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew chapter 15. Are you there? Are you there? Hallelujah. Let's start from verse 1. Then the scribe and and Pharisees who were from Jerusalem came to Jesus saying, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread and he answered and said to them why do you also transgress the commandments of god because of your tradition now let's quickly go to verse 22 and that is our proof test for today's message and behold a woman of canaan came from that region and cried out to him saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, my daughter is severely demon-possessed. Tell your neighbor, son of David, have mercy on me. Let your mercy speak for me today. Let your mercy speak for me today. Do you know that when the Lord's mercy speak for you, 
your pain will be a thing of the past. When the Lord's mercy speaks for you, your trouble will be gone. Son of David, have mercy on me. Such should be the voice of our prayer today, brethren, as we stand before her situation. Viewers all over the world, such should be the voice of your prayer today as you stand before your challenges. Because when answer to our prayers are held back, it is an opportunity for us to be fervent. I mean, to pray the more. Remember, prayer is an acknowledgement that there is a superior realm that controls both the physical and invisible world. And you know, the answer we get depends on how God chooses to implement his will in our lives. The answer you get depends on how God chooses to implement his will in your situation. The Bible says that Job realized this. Job realized that man is certainly undeserving according to his own merit. And that is why he said that shall we accept good from God and not trouble. When he was faced with ups and downs of life, he never boasts of his righteousness. Even when the Bible described him as a righteous man. He never boasts of his righteousness. Remember, our natural courage is as perfect cowardice. The Bible says our natural strength is as perfect weakness. All our sufficiency is of God. In his strength, we must go on and go forth. Tell your neighbor, in his strength, in his strength, we must go on and go forth. Tell your neighbor once again, don't limit Jesus. Don't limit Jesus. You see, today we praise God. We shout hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. When things are good with us. But you know we crucify God. When things tend to go contrary. Beyond our expectation. As if our attitude to God were constant. What do I mean by attitude being constant? I mean being faithful to God. Being faithful to God even when there is nothing on the table. I see we are faithful to God when there is no money in our pockets. Remember God is faithful. The Bible says that God is faithful. Even when we are unfaithful to him, he remains faithful to us. It is we that we are unfaithful. And that is why it seems as if he is powerless in the face of our situations. In the face of our trouble. You see, many to that believe that faith is a panic button pushed only when in trouble. Many believers today believe that faith is a panic button 
nothing. You pushed. Only when you are in trouble. But I failed to realize that it is a lifestyle of trusting God in both good and hard times. You know, many believe today that they only need faith when they are sick in order to receive healing. But I failed to realize that they also need faith to maintain the healing. Many believe they only need faith when they are poor in order for them to receive their blessings, their breakthrough. But I tell you, you also need faith to maintain the breakthrough. Many believe they only need faith when they are in bondage in order to be free. But you know, you need faith to maintain the freedom itself. That is why you see many leaders yesterday becoming Saddam today. That is why you see many rich men and women yesterday becoming poor. That is why you see many people who were once healthy yesterday, today become sick. Do you know why? Because they seize their blessing as an end in itself. Instead of seeing those blessings as a means to an end. You can only maintain your blessing, brethren, if only you can see a reason beyond that blessing. Tell your neighbor, I can only maintain my blessing. You know we have different needs. Whatever might be your need, say to yourself, I can only maintain my blessing. If I can see a reason beyond that blessing. Brethren, you can only maintain today when you see a reason beyond today. Just as my father in the Lord, Senior Prophet T.B. Joshua says, and I quote. He said, the best man in the world can only maintain heat. Only God protects. You can only maintain your blessing when you see a reason beyond it. You can only maintain today, brethren, when you see a reason beyond today. Whatever situation you may be facing, brethren, I want you to know that God is not so much concerned about our present situation as much as he is concerned in our future. You know, we are busy thinking about what to receive, but God is busy thinking of how you are going to maintain your blessing, the future of the blessings. God is so much concerned about how you are going to maintain this blessing. Because the Bible says the first place we are to be prosper is in our spiritual life. When your spiritual life is very low and your possession is greater, your life is in trouble. It is your spiritual life that takes care of the blessings of God in your life. You know, when you are very famous, people know you, you are popular, you have everything you need. And your spiritual life is shallow. Your life will be in a mess. I mean, you will face a greater challenge. So 
tell your neighbor, take care of your spiritual life. Take care of your spiritual life. If you take care of your spiritual life, you will see yourself the way God sees you. I mean, you will be content. I'll just say yes. You lead the way. I'm not afraid of what it means for me to say. This life you gave is not my own. I'm asking you to hear my yes and lead me on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My life is yours. We say yes, Lord. hands let us be seated in the presence of God remember the title of our message don't limit Jesus whatever you ask remember that your life is in God's hands so therefore we should stop instructing God the way he should go rather let us come to his presence and give him thanks not only for what he has done, but for what he is doing and what he will continue to do. Because the Lord is good. You see, today, because of lures and cares of the world, I mean the attractions of the world, today pleasure has turned the heart of man of his creator because of fleshly desire the bible says that many hearts have been turned of his creator and that is why the bible says in the book of first john chapter 2 verse 15 that do not love the world or anything in the world now let's quickly turn our bible to first john chapter 2 and we'll quickly take the reading from verse 15 Are you there? 
Yes, First John chapter 2, and I'll take my reading from verse 15. Yes, the Bible says that do not love the world. Or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17. Brethren, Verse 17, and the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Tell your neighbor, he who does the will of God abides forever. You see, God... knows that when we get to the top our spiritual life can gradually deteriorate you know when you find yourself on the top our spiritual life can gradually deteriorate and that is why it takes so much time in considering our requests for the reason known to him alone. Because when we pray, the Bible says that we'll expect God to supernaturally crown us with all his glory and success. That will make us the center of our own world. But God knows that success has many dangers of his own. You know, we are in the presence of God, in need of one thing or the other. By the time our needs are met, we will be too busy to spend a quality time in the presence of God. When man receives blessing, healing, deliverance, he may continue for some time the zeal to acknowledge the giver of the blessing. But you know, give him some time. He will be too busy with worldly commitment to serve the giver of the blessing. You can see how someone's life can gradually deteriorate. You know, we don't realize that when God blesses us, he blesses us for a purpose. When God healed us, he heals for a purpose. When he deliver, he deliver for a purpose. But we don't realize that. But brethren, take time to take care of your spiritual life. Because the one who gives you blessing has the key of maintenance. The key to make it grow if you can acknowledge him. Because your need for God is far beyond what you can ever imagine. You think you only need healing. You need him more than what you can ever, ever imagine. Do you think you need protection alone? You need God more than what you can ever imagine. So please, take care of your spiritual life. Now, at this point, I just need five volunteers before we crown this message up. I need five volunteers. Please, if you can just come out. I need five volunteers. Yes, I need, uh, thank you. I need also sister to join. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I just want to demonstrate quickly about what we have been talking about. You know, we've been talking about the blessing of God. And it is important for us to also think about how to maintain the blessing. Now, these are our five volunteers. Now, I want to start with um, my brother here. And I will appreciate if you can help me to stand here. Thank you. Now, you are going to represent where we are going. I mean, you are going to represent salvation. So just all this. Thank you. Now, that is where we are all going. And here first, I want... Excuse me, sir. I want you, sir, to represent... A good job. So if you can help me to hold this. Yes, you represent a good job. And here we come. Sir, you can you come to this side? I want you to help me to represent car or a house. Yes, here comes my sister. I want you to represent for me a live partner. And you, sir, represent good health. Now, we have good job, a car, a house, or a house, a love partner, good health. And here we have salvation, which we all are aiming for. The reason why we are created, the reason why we are living. And here come myself as misbeliever, as I walk, as I walk through the highways of life, here comes I receive a good job. And I say, Lord, I thank you for your mercy, you are good God, my provider. And as I continue to involve God in all I do, God do what? Give me more car and house, which are also essentials of life. You know, I say, oh Lord, I thank you for everything. I know that you have given me all this for a purpose. I mustn't forget God. I must see no more. I must remember that if I see those who I need, I must be able to help them because the blessing is not only for me, but for those who are also in need. Thank you, Jesus. And as I continue, here comes a live partner. Wow. Here, there are a lot of challenges here. You know, when we get to this stage, a lot of responsibility. Many people that you need to please, you need to wash, you need to clean, you need to take care, you need to feed many mouths. A lot of responsibility. And if care is not taken, you might forget of where you are going. Now, good health is here. We know good health. Everyone wants to have good health. That is when you will spend so much time going for gym. You start jogging for hours. And you simply forget about your relationship with God and man. And of course, that might probably terminate where you are going. You see, these are the blessings of God. They are a means to an end. They are not the end in itself. The end is salvation of our soul. So thank you very much for your participation. And please don't go, please. Can you take the other fruit as you go back to your seats? Thank you very much. You can take the other fruit. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, the blessing of God is so huge. 
Yes, we thank God. The healing, deliverance, blessing we receive are a means to an end, but they are not the end in itself. The end is salvation of our souls. People of God, take care of your spiritual life. If you take care of your spiritual life, you will see the reason for the blessing. You will realize that God has blessed me so that I can remember those in need. You will realize that someone is somewhere waiting for me for a lifetime to put a quality smile on their faces. That is why we encourage you that you shouldn't limit Jesus. Because God wants to give you a blank check today. You know a blank check. You know you are asking for healing. You don't know what God wants to give you. You are asking for blessing. But rather ask for his mercy. So that he can give you a blank check. To draw from unlimited resources available to you in Christ Jesus. How many of us are ready to receive a blank check? Viewers all over the world, are you ready to receive a blank check? Yes, someone is somewhere busy planning your blessing. So stop talking about your trouble. Yes, let's quickly turn our Bible once again to the book of Hebrew. And that will be the last passage of this for this message. Let's quickly turn our Bible to the book of Hebrew. The book of Hebrew, chapter 12. And we'll quickly take the reading from verse 1 to 2. Yes. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. The Bible instructs us to run this race of life with perseverance, with endurance, with humility, with self control. And above all, with faith. Because whatever unpleasant situation that we may be facing, they are to discipline us and to improve our Christian character. Thus making us a better disciples for Christ. Thus making us a better follower for Christ. So therefore, stop talking about your problem. Whatever situation we may be facing, once again, they are there to discipline us and improve our Christian character. 
thus making us a better follower of Christ. Even then, the Bible says, we must throw off everything that could hinder our movement towards God, such as arrogance. The Bible says we must throw off everything that could hinder her movement towards God, such as pride, self-righteousness. Even offense. But why running this race of life? We must look up to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Remember, when a man of faith receives blessing, he always believes that the best is yet to come. Because he knows that it is just a means to an end. But do you know that when a man without faith receives blessing, he believes the hand has come. Because he sees the blessing as an hand. He doesn't even see the reason to seek God more. And when trial comes, when trial comes to a man of faith, he always believes that there is always a future. But to a man without faith, he believes the hand has come. Now, any moment from now, the man of God will begin to say to you, you are healed, you are blessed, you are delivered. To a man of faith, he believes it is not all up to God. Therefore, I have a role to play. But do you know to a man without faith believe it is all up to God? Therefore, they have no role to play. Brethren, for you to be all that God has called you to be, you have to spend time at Jesus' feet. Spend much of your time, your quality time, at Jesus' feet and learn from him. Therefore, as you take care of your death, of your relationship with Jesus. Brethren, as you take care of your depth relationship with God, He will take care of the breadth of your success. Remember the widow, the orphans, the destitute, the poor, I mean the troubled world. Someone is waiting for you to put a quality smile on their faces. Because God has no hands but your hands to do his works today. God has no feet but is going to use your feet to lead men to his side. So therefore someone is waiting for you for a lifetime. You cannot afford to fail them. Because failing them is failing God. Tell your neighbor, I cannot afford to fail them. I cannot afford to fail them. Because failing them is failing God. Right now, let us rise up on our feet. Let us rise up on our feet. Let us... Begin to ask for his mercy. Forget about your problem. Forget about your trouble. Because he's busy planning your victory. Just ask, son of David, have mercy on me. Let your mercy speak for me today. Let your favor speak for me today. You know, the book of 1 Corinthians says that no eyes have seen. And no ears have heard. No mind has conceived what Christ has prepared for those who love him. Ask for his mercy. 
Say, son of David, have mercy on me. Let your mercy speak for me today. Let your favor speak for me today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We pray that this word will sow a seed of salvation in your heart today, in Jesus' name. I leave you here in faith for the glory of God, and I believe I'm going to meet you once again in faith, in Jesus' name. Thank you. Jesus, we don't mind waiting on you. We are not in a rush, but we are right here waiting on you. We are not in a hurry, but we are right here waiting on you. Lift your hands if you are waiting upon the Lord. Who waits to hear your voice? Who will wait to hear your word? We will wait. We don't mind waiting. If you don't mind waiting upon the Lord, weave your hand, weave your hand, weave your hand. Say, Lord, I don't mind waiting. Say, Lord, I don't mind waiting. Oh, Lord, I don't mind waiting on you. We don't mind. my 
let me see your hands up. You know desperation has a sound. Desperation has a sound. Are you desperate? Let me see your hands up. Anybody desperate for his presence? Desperation has a sound. Remember the blind Bartimaeus. Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. As Jesus was leaving the city of Jericho, he sat on there begging for arms. <laughs> but immediately he heard that Jesus was coming close. You know what? He began to shout. As the son of David, have mercy on me. The crowd wanted to shut him up. Said, Shh, keep quiet. Don't, don't shout. Jesus is passing by. Don't shout. But he kept on shouting. He's the son of David. Have mercy on me. They said, no, 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 no. Don't disturb Jesus. But he kept on saying, son of David, have mercy on me. He's the son of David. Have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. See on me, have mercy, have mercy, let your mercy speak for me, let your favor speak for me, let your divine forgiveness speak for me, let your mercy speak for me, the son of David, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy on me. Say, God, I'm desperate for you. I need you every day. I need you every hour. I'm desperate for you.
Say yes, my Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you. Lift your hands, church. Say yes. I can hear you. Say yes, my Lord. Say yes, my Lord. I love you, Jesus. Anybody love the Lord? Let me see your hands up. We love you, Jesus. Yeah. 